congenital toxoplasmosis is the topic. And uh, there's two kinds of toxoplasmosis infection. There's one that uh, infects uh, HIV AIDS patients. Uh, this uh, video is about uh, a fetus uh, infection uh, that can uh, be uh, the result of a pregnant woman getting toxoplasmosis. The name of the organism is Toxoplasmosis gondii. And uh, toxoplasmosis, uh, in terms of uh, cause, is uh, most commonly uh, uh, acquired in two mechanisms. The first is uh, contamination um, uh, from water, and in particular water that's contaminated with uh, cat feces. And the second way is uh, undercooked or inadequately cooked uh, meat. And those are the two uh, main uh, ways that a pregnant woman can get toxoplasmosis. And of all the women that are infected during pregnancy with toxoplasmosis, approximately 30 to 40 percent uh, will actually uh, go on to have an infected baby. So it's a pretty good uh, uh, risk uh, statistic. Now, the symptoms or the presentation of toxoplasmosis in a fetus, in, uh, and there's a long list, but fortunately, there's something known as a classic triad, and uh, that makes it easy to remember. The first of the three things is chorioretinitis. And chorioretinitis basically um, is an inflammation of, uh, of the choroid and the retina. Uh, the next uh, part of the uh, triad is hydrocephalus. And hydrocephalus um, is basically when you have an increased amount of cerebrospinal fluid uh, in the ventricles in the brain. And the final part is intracranial calcifications. Now, intracranial calcifications can occur in other um, conditions as well, but if it occurs with hydrocephalus and chorioretinitis, that's a pretty strong uh, indication that this is a toxoplasmosis infection. So, how would you go out and diagnose this? When toxoplasmosis is suspected in a pregnant woman, you need to measure uh, antibody levels, and in particular IgG and IgM. And these uh, antibody levels in the pregnant woman will be elevated. So this is the first test and it involves the testing the, the pregnant woman. The next uh, test, if the f fetus is uh, suspected to be infected, then you need to test the fetus, and that's done with a test called a PCR. And PCR is uh, known as polymerase chain reaction. And that test is actually done on the uh, amniotic fluid. And um, this is basically how you would diagnose uh, toxoplasmosis. Now the uh, treatment of choice basically involves uh, two antibiotics that you use to treat the infant. Uh, uh, two medications. The first one is called sulfadiazine, and the second one is called pyrimethamine. So these are the two medications used to treat um, congenital toxoplasmosis. Before I show you a couple clinical vignettes, is prevention. Any pregnant woman um, should be told to uh, avoid any contact with cat litter boxes. And uh, the, the reason is obvious, because the cat litter boxes contain feces that can uh, transmit this organism. That's part of the prevention. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes. An infant is born prematurely and is small for gestational age. At birth, the infant is obviously ill with jaundice, fever, hepatosplenomegaly, myocarditis, and rashes. Neurologic involvement is prominent with hydrocephalus and intracranial calcifications and seizures. The mother 
has a cat and continued to clean the cat's litter box during pregnancy, which of the following is the most likely causative agent? Well, this is a great classic clinical vignette that describes basically an infection of the fetus with toxoplasmosis. And the final one, a newborn baby born premature shows a classic triad of uh, chorioretinitis, hydrocephalus, and intracranial calcifications. Well, let's go through these. Mosquitoes, as you may know, cause malaria. Bird droppings uh, can cause something known as cryptococcus, uh, cryptococcus neoformans, which can cause uh, meningitis. Cats can cause toxoplasmosis, which is the correct answer for this question. Cooling systems uh, are associated with Legionella, Legionella pneumonia. And finally, wash basins are known to be associated with Pseudomonas, Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So, and for this question, of course, it's choice C, which is cats.